afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar today. That is for U101 on base rapid application platform, and it's being brought to us by our very special presenter, Mr. Jim Morrison. As you can see on the screen, he has been at Highland for over seven years, and he has 15 plus years in the industry. Um, he will be taking over and presenting, but if you have any questions, there's a little Q&A box down below on the right side. And just go ahead and type your questions and we'll save them at the end and I will read them out to Jim and he will answer them when he is done. And you will also get a copy of the recording and um, a share base link to the presentation um, in about 24 to 48 hours after this. So uh, that's all I have. So Jim, take it away. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Um, so again, as we mentioned, as I go through this, if you have questions, uh, make sure to type them in there and we'll, we'll go ahead and answer those for the end. But, you know, I personally think the easiest way to understand WorkView is to start at the end. So very much like a Quentin Tarantino movie where you basically start at the end and they reverse order back to the beginning. I think that's the easiest way to understand WorkView. So, I figured I would show it to you first and then we'll explain what it is and, and when you would use it and, and go over some of the details. So WorkView is the OnBase Rapid Application Development Tool. So looking at the screen here, if you've been using traditional OnBase document management or even some workflow, you know, you'll see this looks a lot different from what you might be using today. We have all the data and this particular use case is around contract management. And Contract management is a very, very easy uh, thing to wrap your head around why WorkView is a great solution for. Um, and that's really, I have no idea how many times that vendor is going to redline that contract. It is not a very easily predictable process, right? And there could be multiple people involved in this process where, you know, legal needs to get involved and the contract administrators are involved and everyone really gets the, that 360 view of the process at one time. So. Looking at the data here over on the left hand side, and, and this data can really exist anywhere. Um, you can use OnBase, and we'll talk a little bit later on about classes, but you can store the data inside of OnBase. We can be the database table. More often than not, what we find is we're reaching out, we'll, we might be pulling this data from your ERP, from your HRIS system. Um, if you're in higher ed, maybe your student information system. but. Basically, this data can exist inside of OnBase or we can pull it from third-party systems. This is really the meat and the potatoes of most of our WorkView applications. And, and those tasks you see at the top, we have the ability to keep track of tasks, notes, documents, and emails. The tasks can be generated either as an ad hoc basis. So, you know, that human being is looking at this particular contract request, uh, this issue, this incident, this particular case, and they're the person to decide, okay, I know who I should assign this to, and they might be manually creating a task there. And you'll see there, there's that plus button right on the, the right-hand side of that task ribbon where you can add more tasks. We can also predefine a task list. So, you know, uh, employee onboarding, that's a really good example. Hey, I know that we're gonna hire Jim over in IT. He's gonna need a desk from facilities, um, a chair, a file cabinet. He's gonna need an Active Directory account from IT along with a laptop and then mobile needs to assign him with a device. Well, WorkView is a great solution for that because we can assign this task to all of those departments at the same time, and those departments can come in and actually work their task and mark it completed, and we can even move this to the next st stage in the process once all three of those departments have marked their task complete. So just an example, if, if you're using workflow today in that linear fashion, there's arguably got to be some of the processes that you have internally that we can streamline with, with that task generation. Document management, right? So we bring along the 25, almost 30 years of document management experience uh, that we have. Documents can be part of this. Documents can maybe create this case, something like a form that you would fill out on the front end. Um, and we can even map folders over to these, these cases as well. And then the business process, you know, where it's been, where it needs to go, uh, and when, when those decisions were made. So you'll see here with some basic uh, JavaScript and CSS that's laid on this, we're able to configure these icons and, and really make this a very easy application to, to know what's happening. 
Um, we're even taking this one step further. We see customers not using this, this large ribbon, but rather maybe just one icon on the top left-hand side of the case that will change you know, as it moves through the process. So when you open it up, you, you instantly see where it's at in, in the stage. So, you know, when you would use this, I think we can all say complexity-wise, you know, if you had a form that you need to store, big deal, right? Simple document management. We've been doing that 25 years. What's the metadata on that form, you know, and how long do we maybe need to keep it for? Then we take it one step further. Hey, I have a, I have a form that I not only need to store, but I need to route through a workflow process. No problem, we can very easily do that. Uh, and again, the complexity, we might call that a five. This is where it really shines. You know, and again, regardless of your space, if you're in government, the word constituent uh, is applicable. If you're in higher ed, you can change constituent to student. Um, if you're in the commercial space, let's call it a customer, or uh, maybe it's a vendor. You know, someone calls, you need to create this issue, log the call, find the related record, uh, send communications of acknowledgement, then start working the issue through some type of standard process with the ability to add you know, ad hoc tasks and notes. Oh, by the way, we need to report on all of this. So that's arguably one of the biggest advantages to the WorkView solution is we can catch all of this. We are the net that can manage all of these what ifs, right? Um, and then we don't think about reporting as this afterthought. Uh, reporting is natively part of any application that we build not only with our, our native reports inside of WorkView, but then you can lay something like reporting dashboards on top of an application. So the question I always ask the customer is, you know, how would you go about solving that business need? Uh, would you buy a point application? Would you, um, you know, build an app with custom code from the ground up? The reality is, if you were to buy a point app for every single use case that you have, your organization would have 2,000 applications today. You know, and maybe you do. You know, maybe one of the, the initiatives that you have for 2020 or maybe this year was to consolidate and, and really get rid of all those little one-off applications. Cloudbase can be a great tool to do that. So again, I think I touched on this uh, already, but most organizations, again, they have those core line of business systems. We really complement those um, either by pulling data and, and making them part of an application. We can lay an application on top of one of those core systems that does not have that functionality today, uh, just, just know, regardless, think about your core systems and maybe the gaps that might be in there today. So three ways that we get more done, right? More bodies, which is essentially more money, you know, work harder and longer, nobody wants to do that, you know, work smarter. And the reality is there's a third option between building something or buying something off the shelf that's, you know, using something you already own. Um, it's that foundational platform. We can build many connected applications across the board. And just note, even at Highland Software, right, we're a software company. We have so many gaps, I think, in, in what we do, and we're a very unique um, industry. You know, we have 70-plus applications built on WorkView today. One of them, many of you have already interacted with, and that's called our Software Change Request application. So, you know, I think, Highland is arguably one of the best at being able to listen to our customers and, and make those changes in the software. You know, I've never had Microsoft ask me, hey, we want your feedback. We want to make, you know, this product better. Um, we do. And, and through that process, it's called a software change request, SCR. Our scissor app, as we call it, SCR, um, that's where we track all of those. So anytime, I'm, you know, Highland is developing towards a new release, we look at what do customers want to change, how many customers are added to each of those, what's the impact that we're going to see across industry with this change. They're all weighed and, and essentially we build in what we can uh, for that development cycle. So WorkView, you know, WorkView, if you were to look up the, the Webster definition, it would be a relational database building tool in Onbase with an interface builder to display the content. Yippee, how exciting, right? It's actually very boring when you, when you look at it in that way. The real power comes from being able to tie it to everything else. You know, so the question here, <laughs> you know, if you're not, maybe you are, maybe you are a relational database expert. Um, you know, you, most people that we talk with do not like managing custom code. Um, most people that we talk with do not like inheriting this, this old access database application where 
frankly, it's easier to just to build a new one than to go in and make changes to one that already exists. So I wanted to put this out there, just relational databases 101. So maybe you are a database person, just blank this out for the next 60 seconds. If you are not a database expert, this should be as simple as, as it can get. And um, again, one of my hobbies is fishing. Uh, this is a very, very easy analogy here, right? So you have a fisherman, an angler. Here's the data around who that fisherman is. You have a fish, in this case, a, a shark. Um, the shark name, the species, the genus. There is nothing that relates these two things in any way, shape, or form. An angler has absolutely nothing to do with a shark. Shark has nothing to do with an angler. What relates these two database tables is that event of a catch. What's the catch date? What's the location? What's the bait that was used? The surf conditions, et cetera. Um, I throw this example out here because this is one I did build. I, you know, one of my hobbies is, is shark fishing. We have a shark catch tracking application that I built in OnBase just for, for demo purposes and to show how flexible it is. And again, something I'm passionate about. But this should help you understand. So rela relational databases, now that catch record, the catch record database is our relational database that's pulling and relating all of this data together in that one interface. So again, when you look at WorkView uh, by itself, WorkView is essentially the right-hand side of the screen here. Uh, the contextual data, what's the location, uh, maybe who is this case, uh, who's involved in the process, and then the lower right-hand side, the business activities, those tasks, the notes, um, notifications that we can send out automatically, and then, you know, even a calendar type view that we can build within an application. Over on the left-hand side is really what we've been doing for 25 years, right? Workflow and document management, the roles, rules, processes, and related content. The power comes from being able to put all of this together in a single solution. And here's an example. In this case, WorkView ties and it integrates with all these other Highland products. And again, I'm sure many of you are using these today, things like a Unity form and workflow. We could take a Unity form and drive it right into a WorkView application. Uh, with our new Unity life cycles that came out a few years ago, you can actually take that WorkView object and think of that as your document. And we can route that through a workflow. So that, that screen I showed earlier with contract management we can route that now through a workflow process, just like you do with documents today. Um, yeah, and I, I show this because most of our customers, and maybe not chair-based, but 99% of our customers have, you know, app enabler, Unity forms, and workflow today uh, as part of their solution. So think about where you might own some of this technology today or where you're using this type of technology for a solution. Um, the shared spreadsheets, the, the email inbox or a network share drive just for documents. Uh, those old legacy applications that are, are, you know, difficult to maintain, they're antiquated. Um, or checklists that are on paper, you know, uh, or even a digital checklist. You know, maybe you're using Microsoft Excel as the checklist there. So, again, just like the rest of OnBase, our, our philosophy from the ground up is to build these solutions with configurations and no coding involved. Um, and again, just a quick story, uh, as we mentioned, I'm a good storyteller here. Uh, this particular app, well, I'll, I'll jump ahead and, and go backwards. This particular application was one that I built during a um, webinar. I actually did it on the fly during a webinar for our higher education team, and it's essentially a student advising application. Um, it allows me to... Um, you know, basically track who the student is, what's the visit, how this all relates. I, I just wanted to jump to this and show this is what is the, the core of WorkView applications. This is how they're built from the ground up. So at the top layer, we start with our application. And this can be contract management. This can be complaint management. This can be um, a billing type application. This can be, you know, virtually anything uh, that you need or you might be using some of that other technology for. The next level is our classes. Those are the tables of data within that application. And in the example I showed with the, the shark, right, we have an angler, we have the shark, and then we have the catch record. All three of those are classes within my application. Within those classes are attributes. And attributes you can think of as the, really the keywords of your application. We can map keywords to, to attributes, we can map attributes to keywords. Um, so that's how you would take something like a unity form or even a document and create a case. 
um, you know, using those types of mappings. And then the, the lowest layer there, the filters that you're going to set up. A filter is really the predefined data constraint. Um, show me all cases that are assigned to me. Show me um, all requests due within the next 30 days. Show me all contracts expiring in, you know, 30, 60, 90 days. Those are just some examples of filters and how we can filter data. Not only can filters be really powerful, but then you can embed filters into specific views. So an example I'll use, I'm just going back to contracts. Okay, show me this vendor issue. You, you open up this vendor, and then you can maybe see a filter, an embedded filter within that view of, here's all the contracts we have with this vendor, and here's any issue that we've ever had in the past with that vendor. Um, and again, views and mappings, I think I touched on mappings already, really, that, that allows us to map documents, folders, forms, keywords, all over into a WorkView app. And then the views. Um, your views really can be uh, built out. You can build views specific to, to the process, specific to the users. You can really control who can see what, just like standard on-base technology. So again, just to, not to beat a dead horse here, in this case, this is the employee class. Um, and the attributes that would fall within that. So a little bit more business-centric example. Um, and in this case, you know, that, that student advising application, there's really three steps to building the app. You first lay out your classes, the attributes that you'd like, uh, define the relationships between those tables. You populate that data. So, you know, you're either going to use a form to fill that out. If you're using, you know, an old access database today um, or, or virtually any system today, that can produce a flat file as an output, we can pull that data in and maybe that's going to be our starting point for, for your application. And then the last step is building the user interface. Um, with OnBase 18, we had some great enhancements to our user design and, and the, the user interface designer. It now includes this drag and drop functionality. So if anyone is familiar with Unity Forms or ever built the Unity Form, you'll see this looks a lot like that technology where you can uh, drag and drop you know, the attributes that you see on the left-hand side into your application. So, and again, this is um, just one of the many enhancements that we put to WorkView uh, from 17 to 18. And I just want to sh throw this out there as well. You know, we often talk about things like, like case management. That, that's often the term used for our WorkView tool. It's even in the, the title of the module, right? WorkView Case Manager. The reality is when I talk to customers and I say the word case management, oftentimes it sends a shiver down a customer's spine and they, you know, turn the other way and they want nothing to do with that. Really, a case is nothing more than um, a request, a visit, a complaint. It's, it's virtually anything. And again, that can be kicked off uh, by a document type coming into the system, by someone filling out a form. Um, my point here is you don't have to reconceptualize the solutions every time. Many of these solutions will have the same themes, um, you know, notes, tasks, activities, a workflow that ties on the back end, um, notifications that go out. And what we're seeing now is we're seeing organizations really adopt it from an enterprise level. And what I mean by that is customers are starting to build applications that do nothing at the high level. And what I mean is um, a good example, let's, let's just go to higher ed. You know, higher education has student information systems. All right, so let's create a WorkView app that manages all of our student data. And then when they go and build new applications, all they're doing is pointing to those tables that already exist inside of Onbase. So they're building this connective app with centralizing all student data, um, all educator data, uh, all educator data, all personnel data, and then they're able to build applications, you know, student incident management, um, honorary degree program, they already have all the data in there to manipulate and, and build it out. So um, just some different ways to think about building. And again, you don't have to just take my word for it. You know, the analysts over the past, you know, 10 years, Highland's been a leader in the Gartner quadrants. And, you know, a few years ago they said ECM was dead and we moved towards this content services idea. Uh, we were just named a leader again for, for this year. So that's, that's exciting for us to mention. Um, Julia over at Notre Dame, uh, they were able to build 30 plus solutions in a three year period, where if you were to go back at the same three years before that, when they were using standard workflow and forms, they were really limited to about six or seven live solutions. So 
it's really helped them in, in going forward with this rapid application development team. And I think this is why, right? So when we look at custom application development, we go through this discovery process, this custom development, this very long cycle that ultimately we deliver, um, what might not even be a valid product at the end of that cycle? So the example there is government, right? Government is so tied to regulations and legislative changes. Um, you know, if a law were to change during this process, we might have to go back and reconfigure the entire application. You know, with Onbase, we have the ability to really deliver what I call like an MVP or a framework of a solution, that minimum viable product where, hey, it's nothing else. You know, if someone's using an access database, a shared spreadsheet, um, or an old antiquated app, if nothing else, we can give them a space to keep track of all the tasks, all the documents. It's got a history trail tied to it, notifications, status changes, and then all the great workflow side on, on the back end of it, it, it's tough to argue that you can build a solution very, very quickly that's, that's meaningful using those tools. Right over at the judge room, when I, when I showed that slide that, that talks about all the integration points and how we can integrate with Outlook or ShareBase or you know, a mobile device, you know, all the bells and whistles that you can add to your solution, that's another big advantage here. And again, with little to no integration, all the technologies all in the same ecosystem you know, everything talks together. So the example here is, you know, if you were to go live with that custom application, then, okay, now we're going to extend this app out to our field workers. So we're gonna to have to build a, a mobile app that's gonna integrate with our custom application that we've already built. Okay, let's take it apart, refactor it, and rewrite it. Uh, with our platform, you can really do something like that very easily. Hey, let's add mobile as a component to this. Let's add reporting. Um, let's add this public-facing share side or uh, like public access where individuals can come and, and maybe retrieve cases and things like that. All doable within the OnBase platform. And Sean over at Universal Forest Products, this is a great use case. Uh, vendor management, right? So in the past, anytime they would have a vendor issue, they would take a photo of the damaged shipment, they would add it to an Excel folder or an Excel file as a line item, and someone would then have to do some work to that. Someone would have to go out and retrieve the purchase order and tie it to that. They would retrieve the invoice. So, hey, let's dispute this invoice because this was a damaged shipment. A lot of moving parts there. Now they take a mobile device, fill out a basic form, take a photo of the damaged shipment, click submit. It creates the vendor issue that ties to a vendor record, that ties to the contract, that ties to the purchase order, the invoice. Everything is now in that one stop shop that allows them to see all those moving parts. So, some other use cases. I know I've mentioned a few of these already. You know, IT trouble ticket, project request, uh, project management, vendor onboarding, uh, standard employee onboarding, uh, just use cases across the board that we see. But then we have some use cases, you know, in each industry as well. So, I'm not going to go through each of these and, and read every one of them. Just note, and every single slide here, you'll see a solution that someone had to build. And my point there is, there wasn't an off-the-shelf piece of software available for them. So that customer had to build it, and they chose to build it in OnBase because of all the reasons I've been mentioning. So the example I'll provide here is, you know, lead sampling. Um, everyone probably remembers the Flint, Michigan water crisis a few years ago. Well, now the city provides at least 500 city to residential connection updates every year, getting rid of all those old lead pipes. Well, first they started with sampling. Hey, before we can even replace anything, we have to know which samples are bad, you know, which, which one of these connections are testing high for lead. Well, then they realized very quickly after they deployed that solution, okay, now all these ones are testing high, what do we do about them? And that's when they, you know, when I talk about you know, the, the adaptability of the solution and flexibility, they were able to then add a service request order process right on top of that sampling. So, um, and that one's right in the middle of the screen here, uh, physical records management, right? So government, they fall victim to having to keep a lot of records permanently. Um, grant management, that's another one that's, that's been a hot topic this year. Higher education, the one I really like here would be like student accessibility. You know, how are you managing any student with an accessibility requirement, uh, we can create a profile for each student and show you know, how we've provided that student accommodation um, you know, every year that they've been at our university. Uh, public record request management, um, 
honorary degree management. Those are a few that uh, have been just popping up this year. Financial services and insurance. We've got an application specific for tracking a loan from submission to fulfillment uh, to ensure, and it, timers run on your documents to ensure that all your documents are up to date based on your loan. Right, so if I submit for this commercial loan, it might take 100 days to close. And by the time that it closes, my most recent pay stub or, you know, my business's most recent stub, you know, uh, documents may not be up to date, you know, with, within that, that loan close. Um, commercial examples, you know, we see all sorts of applications here. And you'll see, you know, application for automobile test drive, aircraft data and document management, just a few others where, uh, there was no off-the-shelf piece of software for that. Environmental case tracking and, you know, I'm sorry, environmental case management and issue tracking. Those are customers that, you know, are produ producing goods and they fall suit to EPA regulations and things like that. So um, they not only want to be able to track their own, you know, uh, scores, testing and things like that, but then, you know, how can we improve upon that or how can we make or resolve those issues when they do arise? Healthcare, you know, appeals and grievances, that's a really good uh, example where it's, uh, again, a very, very unpredictable process. It's very tough to build a standard workflow process around the appeals and grievances within healthcare. The flexibility of WorkView allows us to do that by assigning tasks and due dates and notifications um, all on the back end there. So we've really put some enhancements into Onbase over the past few years to make it so you don't have to start from scratch. Um, we have a few point applications that are available. We have a few frameworks available. And uh, most excitingly, the ACE file tool that, that just came out this past year with OnBase 18. So a point application, you know, it's ready to deploy business application. Um, it's built on the Highland technology suite. So essentially, uh, workflow, work view. Some of these include some reporting capabilities. Um, Contract management. This is an example. We have contract management where we've really put it in a box and with a package service uh, engagement with Highland, we can deploy it in your environment and you can be, be delivered something that looks a lot like what you're seeing here. Uh, so we have contract lifecycle management and public record request management if you're in the public sector and fall suit to things like FOIA requests. And again, just to touch on, we talk about the whole package here. Public records is a great example. There's all sorts of little niche apps that, that pop up for this, right? So GovQA, Next Request, uh, Just FOIA. Those are all, you know, great solutions if all you ever needed to do was get a public record request and submit an answer to that person, you know, in a very easy way. The reality is many of those solutions fall short in triaging those requests because they don't have that massive workflow engine on the back end. You know, what really matters with public records is filling out the easy ones quickly and triaging those ones that are going to take a lot of time. Um, you know, public records, that's another example where it's not just the records and the request. There is records management on the back end. If you don't have records management, you know, applied to those documents, you're leaving yourself open to fulfill all those requests. Um, and lastly, public access, another example where why not just make all those documents with no personally identifiable information on them available for the public so they don't even have to request them in the first place. That's where, you know, our solution really hits it out of the park because we can manage all of that within one, one, you know, umbrella. And these come with an admin panel. So this is where you're giving some power back to the business users where, in this case, this is contract management that we're looking at. But this agreement type is going to have this process flow and these stages that reflect you know, the status changes as it moves from step one to step two. Um, this allows those users to configure that or even build out, you know, new process uh, or new contract requests and how they're going to flow through the system. Frameworks are essentially um, starting points. Uh, we have a few of these that are put together today, HR performance management, um, employee relations, and again, this is more or less incident management, uh, but being able to manage issues that happen in the workplace. So, uh, whether it's a safety issue, an OSHA violation, a sexual harassment issue, um, we can track all of those uh, within the same system here. 
And lastly, boards and committees. You know, if your organization has a board of trustees that meets on a monthly basis, we can keep track of you know, who the members are of that board, how often that board meets, where they meet, and even keep track of meetings on the back end. Um, just note, this is not agenda management. You know, agenda management is much more robust from an end-to-end -end perspective of, of controlling the, the meetings and things. But this is more or less that data management. Who, who are the meeting members um, and, and some of the moving parts? And again, you can see there's a button down on the bottom to add a new position to this board. Uh, but again, this is one that we can essentially hand over. And the most exciting part for me, hands down, is the ACE file tool. So ACE actually stands for Application Creation Accelerator, uh, pun intended there with Excel. We're starting with Excel to build our applications now. This was actually built by our intern, Tyler. Uh, needless to say, he's now a permanent employee at Highland Software. Um, and this is, this is it. This is how we built the student advising app that I just showed you guys uh, the screenshot of earlier. So we start by laying out our classes. What are our tables of data? And you can imagine this is very easy to do if we already have an existing app. If you have an access table or an access database out there today, you know, you can look at something like that and, and very easily lay out what your database tables should be. What are the attributes, right? What are the pieces of data? And you can see there, we're specifying the data type. So it can be integer, it can be alphanumeric, we can do uh, Boolean, relationship, uh, formatted text, date. Um, you know, many different data types that we can provide there. And arguably the biggest time savings here is now you're able to specify the data sets, uh, the filters. You can create a view for each of these as you go into the system. And again, I'm, I'm assuming most people on the call have never built a WorkView app, but if you have, you understand how time, time consuming things like uh, creating views were in the past. You would have to create a view for every class that you put into the system. Well, this does it automatically for you. So I use this little magic button, Application Creation Accelerator, right at the top of um, Abbe Studio. We pull it into the system and you'll see there's even two little check boxes at the bottom. If you did not specify filters or views right on that Excel document, if all you did was specify the first two columns or three columns, of the display name, the data type, and the related class, we can then go and import and automatically create those filters and views for each of these classes upon import. So this is an example of the application that it stood up for me right from Excel. And again, not the, the most beautiful application in terms of colors and, and the user interface, but you'll see if this is my starting point, this is light years ahead of using something like an Excel document or an access database now you might come in here and, and add some colors and uh, maybe change the views and, and make it a little more user friendly. But right from Excel to this, this is leaps and bounds better than you know anything that we've had in the past and anything that I've seen uh, from our competitors in terms of a, a rapid application development tool. And with one change to this app, all I did was change my details. You'll see that visit, visit details has an empty column next to it with one change of deleting that column and making visit details 100% of the width, this is now the application that I built. And this is from the web client, um, that usable app right from, an Excel, uh, right from an Excel document. So, you know, just to leave you guys with some resources, um, the application builder community. If you're not on the Highland community, I really encourage you to sign up. Uh, we're constantly posting new information, uh, new ACE files, answering questions from customers and partners just like yourselves. You know, that's the best part to me is, is seeing the collaboration that happens between customers, even across industry of, hey, we're thinking about building this vendor management solution, right? Every single organization across the planet has vendors they work with. So it's, it's interesting seeing, you know, people across industry help each other out. So I really encourage you guys to sign up there. This is where you would find, you know, some basic ACE files that you can get started with um, today. And I also wanted to introduce the idea of a WorkView workshop. So on base 18, like I mentioned, it brought some really great enhancements that allow us to really, um, you know, dig in and provide a lot of value even in a one-day workshop where we can maybe get the ball rolling for you on, on your own applications. Um, some feedback we've heard from customers is, you know, we're WorkView certified, but when we got back to the office, you know, we really didn't know where to start. 
that's what these workshops are all about. We're, we're helping to guide um, and maybe get your first application up and running. And these are completely free to you guys as customers. So, um, you know, if you do want to take advantage of something like that, reach out to your Keymark account manager and we'll be happy to work with them in scheduling your own workshop. Um, and with that, we'll go ahead and open it up uh, to any questions that, that anyone has. And I did not see that. Diane, do you see any uh, questions that are have been submitted yet? No. And just a reminder: if anybody came in late, uh, there's a little Q and A box to the right of your screen. If you guys have questions, you can type them in there. And ask. Yeah, and if you don't want to type them in there, you can always email me as well. My email is right there on the screen, so um, you know, feel free to shoot an email to, to James Morrison or um, ABC at Highland.com. So we, we got that email that stands for Application Builder Community at highland.com. Uh, you can fire us an email. My entire team will get that. Product management will, will be on that string. So if you have questions, ideas, um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Our, our whole team is here to help. So I guess, again, if you guys have any questions, just um, reach out to Jim down there. You can also reach out to your account manager, too, and you will also be getting, again, this presentation and a ShareBase link and also the re recorded uh, audio version, and you'll see the results. Anything else, Jim? Awesome. That is it. Thank you so much, everyone, for your attention. And, uh, again, reach out if you have any questions at all. Jim, thanks for everyone for joining us today. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. You too. Bye.